Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, thanks everybody for sticking around. And uh, I know we all want to eat food at the beach. Um, so as the title suggests, I'm gonna talk about a very practical problem related to um, public key encryption today. So syntactically, we think of public key encryption as taking in a message and a um, public key and uh, randomly outputting a ciphertext. In practice, um, applications make use of PKE by invoking a library such as OpenSSL. Now, it's convenient to assume that the library has access to a source of uniform random coins, but in, and in fact, this assumption of uniformity underpins our traditional notions of security such as INDCPA. But as we all know, in reality, these coins are produced by some real system, uh, which ultimately gathers entropy from its environment in order to produce them. And as we all know, again, this complex process often fails in practice to produce coins of sufficient quality. The causes are many. Um, it might be as simple as commenting out the wrong line of code. Uh, there could be simply no, not enough entropy available in the system's environment, or it could be as malicious as a backdoor being built into the design of the RNG itself. So how can we hope to cope with such a variety of randomness failures? The aim of hedge cryptography is to design primitives and protocols that fail gracefully. And by this I mean they achieve the usual notion of security when randomness is good, but achieve some weaker yet still meaningful notion when randomness is bad. So at their seminal, in their seminal paper at AsiaCrypt 2009, uh, along with inventing the field, kind of, um, Bilari et al. proposed a nice solution for hedged public key encryption. Their idea is to synthesize fresh coins for encryption by uh, using the randomness provided by the system, as well as any entropy contained in the message being encrypted. To do this, we just hash together the public key message and randomness and use the output as the source of randomness for any standard PKE scheme. So in the random oracle model, unless the adversary is able to guess both the message and randomness, uh, the synthesized coins can be treated as uniform. This trick, which in this talk I'll call encrypt with hash, uh, has been adapted to a wide variety of settings. There are a number of papers that deal with encryption in the presence of imperfect randomness, and in many of these, uh, some instantiation of this trick is proposed as a defense. It's also used in the context of deterministic encryption, where no randomness is used at all, and we rely just on the entropy in the message. In fact, the idea of synthesizing coins for encryption was used at least as early as 1999 by Fujisaki and Okamoto, who used it as part of a transform from CPA to CCA security. So as you can see, there's been a lot of theoretical interest in this idea. Um, it's explicitly designed for practice. It seems like it's a cheap and practical way to harden deployed crypto. Because, of course, it works with any encryption scheme, and you should be able to implement it without making any code changes. So the conceptual starting point for our work is a very simple question. Just how easy is it to implement encrypt with hash with real libraries? So to start, we looked at OpenSSL, Open um, perhaps the most widely deployed crypto library in use today. So, at its highest level, OpenSSL provides an abstraction for public key encryption, sometimes called secure envelopes. Uh, the first input to this function is the encryption context, which specifies the public key and uh, al algorithm. OpenSSL facilitates key generation and management, and it's possible to instantiate this context properly without knowing much about the underlying crypto. And this is great news from a usability perspective. Conventional wisdom in API design is that the programmer should have to make as few security choices as possible. And it seems like we see this principle at work here. But in short, the encryption context lets the programmer specify the public key. The remaining arguments specify a buffer for the ciphertext and the plaintext. Notice that nowhere in this interface is there a place for the uh, programmer to specify the random coins. And this is likely intentional on the part of the API designers. Crucially, it's harder to misuse this API, in particular by inadvertently providing a weak entropy source. But this design choice also means that we can't implement encrypt with hash, at least, at least at this API level. Okay, but if you know what you're doing, the uh, library should provide a little more flexibility. 
So let's go a level deeper and look at OpenSSL's interface for RSA-based encryption. As usual, the, the programmer provides a buffer for the plain text and ciphertext and public key. In addition, this interface requires the programmer to specify the padding scheme. So OpenSSL implements a few standards, and it even lets the programmer use no padding at all, which means you can implement raw RSA or handle padding yourself. So this, is, this interface gives you just about all the flexibility you need for RSA, except that it still doesn't expose the coins. So the high and mid-level APIs don't let us implement encrypt with hash. But let's not give up quite yet. As we all know, hacking OpenSSL makes for excellent headlines. So let's dig a little deeper into the code and see what we can do. The first question is, where are the coins coming from? So here we have a, a little code snippet of RSA OAEP, it, well, the implementation in OpenSSL. The function that implements the padding takes as input the message, as well as some other stuff we can ignore for this talk, and outputs the padded message. This in turn invokes a function called RANBytes, which fetches the required number of bytes from OpenSSL's RNG. So it's down at this level, uh, this lowest level, that is the first chance you have to touch the coins. So let me restate the question. How do I implement encry encrypt with hash in OpenSSL? Let's have a look at the options. If you're an OpenSSL maintainer, the most direct approach would be to modify the implementation. So for example, you can modify OAEP code directly so that the public key message and output of RAND bytes are hashed together, and the output is used as the uh, seed for the padding. And this would, of course, be pretty straightforward to do. However, these modifications mean that your implementation of RSA OAEP no longer complies to the RFC that standardizes it. So from a compliance standpoint, this solution is a non-starter. Another approach, which requires no code changes at all, would be to manipulate the output of the RNG. And so how can we do this? Is, is, this, is this even possible? So OpenSSL allows the application to provide entropy for the RNG. And the same interface might uh, be used, at least in principle, uh, to implement encrypt with hash. But there are a number of technical hurdles to overcome here, not the least of which is that it simply doesn't work in general. One reason is that OpenSSL lets the programmer specify, specify a hardware-based RNG that uses the same interface. But for obvious reasons, hardware RNGs don't let you modify their internal state. So there's no way to make this work with this configuration. From a software engineering perspective, I think the best option is to build your own RNG for OpenSSL that explicitly supports the implementation of encrypt with hash. This isn't such a bad idea, but it does, uh, it does mean you're going to have to contribute a fair bit of code to the library. But for those of us who'd rather not have to touch the code, there are no viable options. The punchline to this story is that encrypt with hash, while really nice in theory, is not as easy as it would seem to implement. So you might be asking yourself, if the problem is the API, then why not just change the API? Well, first and foremost, if a change is made to the interface, then this means that every application that uses that interface needs to be modified as well. And it's for this reason that a library as heavily used as OpenSSL needs to have a very stable interface. And the, planners need, uh, the designers need to be, plan for it to be around for a very long time. The fact is that API design is hard work. It's a complex trade-off between making the library easy to use and easy to extend and there are just no easy answers to the question of how much exposure to give to the programmer. We looked at a number of libraries, some widely used and others less so, and found that about half of them expose the RNG to the programmer in a way that directly fac facilitates encrypt with hash. This finding highlights this tension between usability and flexibility in API design. But I'd like to emphasize that none of the libraries on the left side of this table are used as widely as, as OpenSSL. It's also worth noting that encrypt with hash is not the only way to hedge PKE. So for example, Bellari et al. propose a couple solutions that involve deterministic encryption. But such schemes are not uh, implemented in common libraries, and you can't use them, at least not without touching the coins. 
Okay, so these observations led us to revisit the theory of hedge PKE and see if we couldn't nudge it a little closer to practice. In doing so, we're guided by two basic questions. The first is, what simple and efficient schemes can we implement using APIs exported by common libraries? And second, what are the strongest security notions we can hope to achieve with these schemes? Towards addressing the second question, we took as our starting point the security notion of Bellari et al., which they call indistinguishability, <laughs> indistinguishability under chosen distribution attacks. We're, we're going to rename this to MMRCPA for reasons that will be appear, apparent in a little while. But first, in order to understand their notion, it's helpful to begin with the usu usual chosen plain text attack setting. So in the INDCPA game, we give the adversary an encryption oracle of which it asks pairs of messages. It gets in response an encryption of one of these. Which one gets encrypted depends on the outcome of a coin flip made at the beginning of the game. Since we're interested in randomness failures, we'll explicitly de define the algorithm that produced the coins. Let's call it R. Now, in the INDCPA setting, we assume the output of R is uniform. But what happens when this assumption fails? In the worst case, the adversary may simply be able to guess the coins. Then no encryption scheme provides security under chosen plain text attack. The key insight of Bellari et al. is that if the message has sufficient entropy, then we can leverage this fact for security. So in a chosen distribution attack, the adversary specifies a distribution on message pairs. In fact, the notion is a little bit stronger than this. We actually allow the uh, messages and coins to be jointly distributed. To model this, we have the adversary specify a randomized algorithm called an MMR, uh, well, uh, called an MMR source that outputs a message, a message, and some randomness. The oracle executes this algorithm, encrypts one of the messages with the coins, and returns the output. So this notion already captures our intuition of what can we can achieve when randomness fails. However, there's a problem. It turns out that we can't provide security for distributions that depend on the public key. Given the public key, it's possible for the adversary to craft an MMR source such that the ciphertext leaks the, message, uh, the challenge bit in just one query. So to ameliorate this problem, we withhold the public key from the adversary until after it finishes its queries. So now the adversary runs in two stages. In the first, it makes its queries, and in the second, it's given the public key and it outputs its guess. Finally, we can further strengthen the notion by modeling messages and coins jointly distributed across encryption calls. We do this by having the MMR source output vectors of plain text and coins. And with that, we have the security notion of Bellari et al. To summarize, in the INDCPA setting, the adversary chooses the messages, and the coins are chosen uniformly by the oracle. In the MMR CPA setting, the adversary specifies a distribution on messages and coins, which is required to have high min entropy. We say that a PKE scheme is, is hedge secure if it achieves both of these notions simultaneously. OK, so this is our starting point. The first way we exchange this model is in a small syntactic way. In our paper, we decided to look at labeled encryption, where sender and receiver share some data associated to the plain text. This idea goes back to a classical paper by Victor Shoup. It's also uh, important in practice. Uh, some schemes implemented in real libraries actually use labels. But more significantly, we strengthen the notion by incorporating chosen ciphertext attacks. To do this, we provide the adversary with a decryption oracle in both its query and guessing stages. We show that MMRCCA is achievable with primitives exported by high-level APIs. What we propose is a hybrid encryption scheme based on a trapdoor permutation, hash functions, which we model as random oracles in the security analysis, and symmetric authenticated encryption with associated data, commonly abbreviated to AEAD. The construction itself is relatively straightforward, but I'd like to point out one interesting detail. The public key is not just the description of the trapdoor F. It also includes a short uniform random string called a randomizer. The randomizer is part of a technical trick that simplifies the proof of security. And it allows us to make no assumptions about the trapdoor permutation beyond uh, one wayness. 
It's actually uh, borrowed from Bellari et al. and is widely used in the hedge PKE literature. A practical implication is that if you have a certificate for the trapdoor F, like an RSA public key, for example, adding the randomizer to the public key means that you have to reissue a certificate. This can be somewhat problematic in practice, but otherwise, implementing this scheme is a straightforward matter of piecing together high-level API calls. There are some technical details to attend to, but someone with a moderate amount of crypto expertise would be able to implement this correctly. But if you don't want to reissue certificates and you don't want to have to cobble together API calls, you're stuck. Fully implemented PKE schemes exported by libraries simply don't achieve this strong MMR notion. This led us to rethink the MMR setting. The model allows for adversaries that adaptively corrupt the randomness source and prior to every encryption call. So in practice, and in the worst case, this attack amounts to changing the behavior of the system RNG prior to every invocation of uh, the encryption algorithm. We think this model is overly conservative, at least with respect to known attacks and randomness failures. I'll remind you that the high profile failures I alluded to at the beginning all involved one-time corruption of the RNG. This observation led us to consider a weaker attack in which the coins are corrupted once prior to the adversary's attack. Instead of specifying an MMR source, the adversary specifies an MM source, which outputs vectors of messages. The vector of coins is output by a randomness source, which parameterizes the security experiment. Thus, in the MMCCA game, the, uh, the, the coins and messages are independent. This fact allows us to give the adversary the public key at the outset. This is achievable if the randomness source has enough entropy so that the adversary can't just guess the coins. But this change is useful for a couple reasons. First, it's intuitively nice because the attacker does know the public key in real life whether or not its attack explicitly depends on it. From a theoretical perspective, it immediately allows for adaptive security, which is only achievable in the MMR setting if the scheme has an, it admits an additional security property beyond message privacy. But I won't, I'm not going to get into this. I'll just refer you to the paper for the details. We're able to show in the random oracle model again that RSA OAEP is secure in this weak randomness setting. This is useful because it's the only provably secure PKE scheme offered by virtually all common libraries. In our paper, we provide a full treatment of the RFC standard, including labels, which the standard specifies as being optional. This is what's actually imp implemented in real libraries, although not all APIs expose the labels. So to summarize, the MMR CCA attack is very strong since it, it admits adversaries that adaptively corrupt the randomness source during the course of their attack. The strength of this attack led us to consider a weaker model where the coins are corrupted once before the adversary's attack begins. We're able to show, uh, able to give the adversary the public key in this setting, but the output of the coin source must have enough entropy so that the adversary can't simply guess them. But this is still a weaker requirement than the usual setting, which requires uniform coins. So as you can see, the burden on the system to provide high quality randomness decreases as we move from INDCCA to MMCCA, and finally to MMRCCA. Intuition would suggest that weakening the requirements on the system results in a stronger notion. But the nature of the attack is quite different in each of these settings. Nevertheless, we find that we're able to work out relationships among these notions under certain restrictions. Now, to wrap up, we find that existing hedge PKE schemes are difficult to implement using real crypto libraries, although these schemes are explicitly designed for practice. In particular, you can't implement encrypt with hash in OpenSSL without modifying the code in some way. So, in our work, we revisited the hedge, P hedge PKE from the perspective of what is achievable using existing libraries. Building off of prior work, we introduce a CCA extension to the usual MMR attack and show it's achievable via hybrid encryption. And our construction makes uh, use of 
primitives exported by common libraries. We also introduce the weaker MM attacks and show that MMCCA is achieved by RSA OAEP. Finally, the principles that drive API design are inherently in conflict with one another. API should be easy to use, even for those who may know very little about what it is they're doing. More to the point, they need to be difficult to use incorrectly, especially when they involve cryptography. On the other hand, they need to be flexible enough to be used in new ways, ways not even envisioned by the designers. This is especially important because APIs exist for a long time. We hope that our work calls, uh, calls these issues to the attention of our community. When developing new theory, it's a good idea to take a look at libraries and see what they're already doing and how they're designed. Whenever possible, we should favor solutions that are supported by existing APIs. Thank you very much.